Hi, this is the Tropical Tibbet for Sunday evening, November 8th, coming to you from a building that still has electrical power here in Miami. We're just north of Tropical Storm Ada. I'm here in Miami. We've had a rainy, windy day here, as have many in South Florida, as Ada has come up across Cuba overnight last night and is now making its way toward the Florida Keys, hooking toward the left as it does so. And it's been an interesting evolution today. When the storm came off Cuba this morning, it had a central mass of convection and looked pretty good and had a good inner core wind structure. And it still has a well-defined inner core wind field. But what has happened is as it has started interacting with the upper low that's over here to the west of Florida, we've had a very prompt injection of dry air that is now circulating into the center of the storm. And this is arresting a lot of the thunderstorm activity that had been occurring in the core. So while the storm is over warm water and the shear isn't even that high anymore the dry air is getting to the core at this point and so as expected this is kind of staying just under hurricane intensity and the structure looks more like a subtropical cyclone than a tropical cyclone given the lack of central convection but the weather hazards remain similar and uh, it doesn't really matter at this point in terms of the impacts to land this is the radar picture showing the vigorous rotation here as the center is now hooking toward the left toward the florida keys and will probably get very close to them sometime overnight tonight we've had rain bands raking across the bahamas and south florida and the florida keys today strong winds all day the strongest winds are in the central band on the northern and eastern side of the center. This isn't really an eye wall because these thunderstorms are not very tall, but this band of rain is where the strongest wind is currently moving toward the upper keys. Uh, but we've had strong wind even well north of that throughout the day. This is the current surface observation map showing that even right now we have a sustained wind of 45 miles per hour just east of Biscayne Bay. And we've had winds gusting well over tropical storm force even up into central Florida. And we've had wind gusts as high as 60 miles per hour down in southeast Florida. So definitely tropical storm warnings being verified here uh, with the possibility for power outages and tree branches coming off of trees with that kind of wind. Uh, but it doesn't look like the hurricane watches are going to verify in southeast Florida tonight as we're not seeing this really intensifying right now. And it's been steady for most of the afternoon and evening, not really changing in intensity either way. You can see strong wind in the Bahamas as well over tropical storm force, even well to the northeast of the center. Again, this is big. The area of hazardous weather extends well to the north. We've also had a lot of rainfall with this. This is an NWS estimate showing over four inches of rain in bands of yellow here via a radar estimate. And uh, we'll see what that actually ends up being at gauges in the end. But we've had strong training bands. Always hard to tell exactly where the heaviest rain will fall with these. It's been a little bit drier in south, the southernmost part of Florida, but up in Broward County, especially lots of rain today and out in the Keys as well. Rain will likely continue for some time as this storm is about to slow down a bit. As we look at the water vapor satellite picture, it's starting to interact with an upper level low and it's hard to distinguish the two now you can see this broad body of rotation really the storm is just moving underneath of the upper low at this point and so the two are about to merge and uh, this is likely to cause it to slow down because this upper low and now ADA as well really has nowhere to go but you can see the dry air wrapping into it and that's causing it to remain at tropical storm intensity right now not really expected to to gain a whole lot of intensity in the near future and in terms of its track, uh, even though it will be slowing down, we do know it's going to be moving some kind of direction. And uh, right now it's kind of hooking toward the left. And one of the reasons it's doing that is because of the interaction with the upper low, but also the fact that we have this kind of extension down south of Cuba now. There's a little bit of rotation here, almost forming a binary system where the two are kind of swinging each other around counterclockwise. And uh, this interaction is probably one of the reasons why this is now expected to hook even perhaps back toward the south now on a lot of model guidance. And this could bring it a fair distance from Florida and perhaps even back down closer to Cuba over the next couple of days. And then it would likely come back toward the north once this tension is released. And I can show you how that works on uh, some of the model guidance here. This is the European Ensemble Mean 500 millibar pattern showing uh, for tomorrow morning, Monday morning, the system has swung over to near Key West or the Dry Tortugas. And you can see again the big ridge to the north like this. So this, this upper low gets marooned along with Ada beneath it. This other low here is starting to rotate in and get merged. And once this whole thing ends up uh, down toward the southwest, you can see it nears Cuba. And then where is it going to go after that? Well, this ridge 
is stronger than that one. So there's a stronger southerly component here than the northerly component here. So the whole thing is going to edge northward just a little bit. You'll see it do that. And now this jet stream is approaching and it becomes a question of whether this actually comes all the way back up into Florida and gets directed along this flow or if something else happens, and by that I mean the redevelopment of this ridge on the western side, perhaps this southerly flow is able to trap this once again between two flows opposing one another. You have this uh, southerly flow over Florida, but this northerly flow to the west now strengthens, perhaps slowing this down one more time or moving it back southward once more. And this is what the current model disagreement is on the long-term future. And I'll show you this in a clearer way here on the GFS. This is the moisture map in the mid-level mid -level flow showing the storm here. Moving again toward the left, here's the other part rotating around. So the two pinwheel for a little bit of time. So you'll see it come down. It's like, okay, it's not gonna go all the way back down in the Caribbean, but once this other part rotates up, the whole thing will then uh, just mosey off toward the north. Not very strong here on the model compared to what it is now, because again, a lot of dry air has been wrapped into the circulation and that will hold it down for quite some time. And uh, at this point, maybe it mixes out a little bit of that dry air by midweek, Wednesday or so. Maybe it strengthens a little bit. Some of the model runs show that. Uh, but then as it starts coming north, you'll see that this ridge starts flexing its muscle here with very strong mid-level flow out of the north. And the effect of that is, again, to counter the southerly flow around the ridge here to the east. And uh, so these two start competing to steer the storm, trying to pull it north or pull, pull it back south again. But the other thing going on here is that's a lot of shear as well, because this mid-level flow out of the north is directly opposed to what's going on above that. All the flow here aloft is something like a westerly jet stream turning toward the northeast. And so this is a strong shear. And so what you see is the storm actually uh, try to decouple on the model. You'll see that here all the dry air gets in, all the convection gets sheared off to the northeast, and the storm actually just dies here over the Gulf of Mexico, completely dry vortex by Friday evening. Now models have gone back and forth on how this could evolve, and it's likely to be sensitive to how strong the storm gets over this part of the Gulf and exactly what the steering ends up being in three, four, or five days. And as we all know, there is some uncertainty in a forecast at that time range. This is another opinion on it. This is the H wharf showing uh, the current location of the storm. And you can see that the deep greens here in the rain bands are where all the moisture is, but the core has dried out. It's a lighter green or gray here. So not a lot of deep moisture. And as this moves toward the west, you'll see the strength doesn't change a whole lot. This pressure number is about the same in the low 990s. And it moves uh, down toward the south. And you can see at this point, maybe it starts to pick up a little bit more moisture. And if it forms a little inner core here after enough time, middle of the week, Tuesday evening, Wednesday, maybe we see a period of restrengthening. But at this point, it's away from the Florida Keys, hopefully away from Cuba as well. And now it completes that loop and starts coming back north like we described. And at this point, maybe it's a little stronger, maybe not. Uh, the prior run here was a lot stronger, for example. So this is very sensitive. We're talking about runs that have been very different over time. This particular run is weaker than the last two runs. And then it starts coming back north. And you can see this approach Florida again. And this is a, a hurricane on the model, but you'll see it start to struggle with that shear again. Even as it nears, you'll see the, the storm decouple. Uh, with the mid-level circulation now off to the east of the low-level center. And as it tries to approach Florida for a second landfall, it, that, that's a dying storm right there. So while we'd still have impacts to Florida, this would be weakening because of the intense shear that I just described. And again, it depends on you know exactly how the shear evolves in four to five days. The runs before this were still a little stronger. That's another dying storm, but it's still stronger because it was a Cat 3 before this point on that run. And the run before that... Uh, was also a stronger storm uh, after crossing Florida. So just to show you, there's uh, still a range of outcomes here in terms of potential second approach to Florida. Uh, but right now it does seem like it will come north at some point. Uh, maybe it doesn't make it back to Florida, but I should point out that even if it doesn't make it back, like here on the GFS, it ends up uh, dying early, which means the low-level vortex starts drifting with the low-level flow and never makes it back to Florida. But the remaining wetness here will stay on the eastern side. So even if this doesn't make a second landfall, disturbed weather is likely to continue throughout the remainder of the week. And even during this part of the loop, if I go backwards here, when this gets over to uh, near western Cuba again, we're still talking about moist flow, perhaps rain bands over certain areas where heavy rainfall could occur over the Florida Peninsula 
for several days to come, so flash flooding is going to be a big concern here, and winds will remain gusty, but probably not damaging as this moves away from the Keys. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Here's just one more look at it from the European starting Monday morning, showing it kind of dipping down here. Not much change in strength. Almost gets to Cuba again, then similar motion to the other models, strengthening a bit as it comes back north, and then weakening as it approaches a second landfall in Florida where it moves into the Big Bend and then up the southeast U.S. coast as it weakens. So that would be a weaker storm again, and we'll hope for that, but still a few questions to be answered before we quite get there. This is the uh, Hurricane Center's forecast. Uh, still a hurricane warning up for the Keys. Not sure we're going to get winds actually that high. Right now, max winds are about 60 or 65 miles an hour. Unlikely to get much higher, given that, again, we have a devoid core. Uh, no thunderstorms over the center of this thing right now. Unless we get those, we're not going to see the winds get any higher than they currently are. Uh, but plenty of rain banding still, and flooding is a concern uh, throughout South Florida. Probably the biggest concern here with standing water and, uh, of course, storm surge at the coast and flood-prone areas, as we'll have strong easterly onshore flow for some time yet. And uh, by tomorrow afternoon, should be clearing the keys and then dipping toward the southwest. Maybe it's a hurricane at this time, maybe not. It'll probably be either just under hurricane intensity or just over in the 60 to 80 mile per hour range during this time. Tropical storm watch for Western Cuba because it could make a second approach here. And then again, that turn toward the north like model guidance is showing and weakening as it approaches this part of Florida due to the combination of increased wind shear and also the water gets a little colder here too. I forgot to mention that. So still a few days away from any potential second landfall, but disturbed weather is likely to continue throughout the duration of this forecast period. So be on your toes for flooding and other hazards if you live in Florida for the rest of that week, for the rest of this week. That's it for now. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.